Educate Arkansas, sponsored by Forward Arkansas. Welcome to this special edition of Five News as we highlight teachers, schools, and students where you live doing extraordinary things. Thanks for joining us. I'm Erica Thomas. Education is constantly evolving from the way our kids learn to what they're learning. Five News anchor Ruan Diaz begins our coverage, introducing us to a group of students taking their passion for building to the world stage. That clanging and banging? Well, that's the new sound of education. This is the Bentonville West Robotics Club, and to say they're ahead of the game is an understatement. Our kids, the steps that they're doing right now are the things that are going to drive the future uh, of STEM and STEM education. Uh, because again, right now I'm having to train kids for jobs that aren't invented yet. And that's Glenn Holderby. He does more than teach. He's also the club's coach, leading a team of young engineers. So I believe that the VEX Robotics Competition has given me the thought process and, and hardware skills to make me successful in that field. Yeah, you heard that correctly. This group isn't just building for fun, they've been building for the biggest engineering competition in the world. Right now we're about like three months in with build. That's not all consecutively, that's broken up into different times. The build and the build up is for the world's competition, where the best robotics teams in the world go head to head. So when I say world, I mean, I think last year there were 72 different countries that were represented at the VEX uh, online competition. This year, we believe that we have the competitive ability to actually be successful at the world level, which would be a first for the state of Arkansas. Now, while a win would be great, just getting there is already an accomplishment. One that doesn't come without a lot of dedication. It's a coach's dream. You know, you think of that top athlete and how they come in, you know, before school, after school, they're always practicing. That's exactly what my students do. Um, and, it, and this is an opportunity for them to showcase their skills that you know, people don't normally get to see. Covering all the news and robots where you live, Ruben Diaz, 5 News. By the way, the Bentonville West Robotics Club finished 40th out of 80 teams in the world's competition in Dallas. Meanwhile, a partnership with a nonprofit food core, Cedarville Elementary, is giving its students a chance to get hands-on learning outside the classroom. Let's head inside the Pirate Patch, the school's award-winning garden. It's a pretty nice garden out here. Very nice. Evan, you want to dig the hole? Yeah. Food Corps' mission is to connect kids with healthy food. Get the get the sage out. Yeah, I don't like. Okay, what she was perfect. Like. Pop that in there. We are 100% grant funded and donation funded. We don't want to pack it too tightly. Lacey Fletcher is a first year Food Corps service member and mom of two elementary school students. Her job is to keep the Cedarville Pirate Patch thriving. I hope they learn where our food comes from. It's amazing, even in this rural community that we live in, they don't know the simplest things. They don't know where a tomato comes from or how it grows or how a strawberry grows. But this space is all about teaching those life lessons. Every Cedarville Elementary student gets to spend time in the garden twice a month. And I really want to instill where it comes from and how it's grown and what you have to do. And uh, I think it also teaches a little appreciation. I really appreciate getting to come out here because lots of kids don't really get to do this stuff. There are fruits and vegetables planted in raised beds, along with some farm animals. Two chickens, a rooster. Um, we just got a bunny today and we got have a goat named Petunia. This is Petunia. She's a six week old Nigerian dwarf goat and she actually lives with Lacey at home and then comes to the garden every single day and gets to interact with the students. She even goes to the store with them. Who drank it all? Good girl. Do y'all want to gather some eggs? Got the eggs hatching inside and then we'll have chicks. Lacey is working to instill patience and character in all her students as they tend to the fruits of their labor outside in the elements. I love it. As a mom, it hits home because I know that my kids love to be outdoors. You can feel the fresh air, the sunlight. A lot of things you can do out here that you can't do in a classroom. It just feels way more calming out here. The 2021 Arkansas Grown School Garden of the Year is showcasing the value of hard work, inspiring kids to dig into their education. Hey, I grew that. That didn't just, I didn't just buy that at a store. I put a seed in the ground. That popped up because of what I did. So I think it's working. 
It's definitely working. Meanwhile, a Northwest Arkansas school district is trying to ease the minds of parents whose kids ride the bus to and from school every day. It's called Transportant. It's a system that literally tracks your child when and where they get on the bus and when and where they get off the bus. As 5 News anchor Darren Baum shows us, the ultimate goal is that students won't get lost riding the bus. Every child in Bentonville schools will be issued a name badge that has an RFID in it. And as students get on the bus, they will swipe on. When students get off the bus, they will swipe off. And that badge scanned into the system will be sent to an app that parents can download starting this fall to follow their child. And the parents will get a communication that Jason has now boarded bus 124. When the students get to school or to their final destination, when they swipe off the bus, parents again in the app will get a message that Jason has now gotten off bus 124. Allison Teeters is a parent of three in the Bentonville School District. She says she's thrilled with this new system. It's nice to know that like there I know he's going to be on the bus. He's on his way home and then I get that confirmation that he's off the bus. It definitely is reassuring knowing that I know where he's at and he's not you know in a car line thinking I'm picking him up. Teeters says the timing of the system couldn't have been better. This year is a new adventure for us because he's going to middle school and his younger brother will still be in elementary school. So last year I had the comfort of them being on the same bus. This year they'll be on different buses. Not only will this keep track of a child getting on and off buses, Salmon says the system will let parents know when the bus itself is on its way to the bus stop. Parents wake up in the morning time and they don't know if the driver is there. They don't know if the bus is running. They literally have to get everybody dressed, go to the bus stop and kind of wait. The bus may show up, the bus may not. When the bus starts the route, the notification to parents in the app will, will state bus 124 has now started the route. A music teacher in Fort Smith is going above and beyond for his students. Joseph Reed applies for grants to make his classes interactive and fun. 5 News Morning anchor Laura Simon shows us what his fifth graders at Fairview Elementary are learning. It's hard to miss the artwork outside Joseph Reed's classroom at Fairview Elementary. He's a music teacher, so it's no surprise you might hear it. Before you see it. Our art teacher, Miss Beaumont, and I worked together to create this. I took some old records that I had personally and we handed it out to our fifth graders. His students painted the records using primary and secondary colors. Because of an app called Spiro Spectrums, these are soundboards too. It's always fun hanging out with Mr. Reed. He always makes the lessons really fun. Fifth graders Noel Bright and Isabella Martinez compose their own loops, beats, and sounds. Like you click these and like they like play like a little bit like a little, like a little tune. And basically, it's like a little DJ board. So there's pre-recorded sounds. They can record sounds themselves. They can uh, download sounds from other places. And then it's just a mixer. And then they assign colors that can be picked up with the rings, and they'll activate the soundboard. It was really fun getting to be creative uh, and combining art and music together. The reason his students have tools like this to learn on is because Mr. Reed applies for a lot of grants. The district does really well for providing for our everyday needs in our classroom, but to get those extra things, we just have to, we have to write the grants, and that's part of it. I've got to say that the work that Mr. Reed puts into it is definitely like phenomenal. In Fort Smith, covering the music where you live, Laura Simon, 5 News. And in a rural part of our area, teachers and administrators are taking a massive burden off parents with some strategic planning and use of federal funds. Small school districts in southern Sebastian County are taking on the cost of school supplies. 5 News anchor Joe Ellison has more. Well, typically we would provide the parents in the summertime with a school supply list glue and scissors and crayons, binders and composition notebooks. But for schools like Charleston and Lavaca, to name a couple, those lists can be tossed. That's because the districts are buying school supplies for students. So we do allow students to provide their own backpack and water bottle. Charleston Superintendent Melissa Moore says school district neighbors at the county line district were doing this first. That's how they got the idea. Parents know school supplies can be costly, so how are local school districts footing the bill for hundreds of students at a time? Schools across the U.S. received $122 billion combined through the American Rescue Plan. As all the schools did, 
we received money due to the pandemic and we've been able to utilize that money. Rachel Fisher, the Charleston principal, who is also a teacher, says the plan will help with classroom flow. And you can just jump into the learning and the building relationships with kids. You don't have to worry about any of that. You have all your things prepared, ready to go, labeled. Everybody has the same thing. It just makes it easier. According to Arkansas Advocates for Children, 67% of students in Sebastian County schools are eligible for free or reduced lunches. It gives you an idea of how many families could see this as a huge help. As far as how long it could last, it depends on how long federal dollars will continue to stretch. But for schools like Charleston, they may try to keep the program around. We'll have to look for another fund source when when that money um, is gone. In Charleston, covering news where you live, Joe Ellison, 5 News. Well, any teacher will tell you reading fosters a love of learning and just 10 miles across the state line. There's a program that's impacting the lives of children in the River Valley and honoring an American hero who died fighting for our country. Muldrow Elementary School is using technology to connect its students with stories through a brand new book vending machine. Kids can earn tokens by making good choices handed out by all teachers in the building. The machine itself is dedicated to 1994 Muldrow graduate Josh Wheeler. The Army Master Sergeant was killed while serving in Iraq in 2015, and his mother-in-law, an educator herself, reached out to the school, wanting to do something in his honor. And if we can foster that love of reading, obviously they're going to succeed in school. And that's where my passion is. Get the books in their hands, get them home, and read. Josh's family is donating funds to help fill the machine with books, and his photo will remind the next generation of his sacrifice. Well, bedtime can be a struggle, especially after the summer break. So to help you and the kids get back on a solid sleep schedule, we spoke, spoke to a sleep expert. Five News reporter Tiffany Lee explains. Being consistent is the most important thing in terms of a sleep schedule. Which means going to bed around the same time and waking up around the same time every day, even on the weekends. And this isn't just for kids. It's recommended for adults, too. Bedtimes are a great way to keep your kids on track. And if it's earlier than their summer bedtime, here's something to try over the weekend and into the week. To wake them up earlier, have them sleep deprived for that one night so that they fall asleep earlier the next night and then they can sleep better. Because you are waking them up earlier, it will actually help them go to sleep sooner the next night. And Dr. Supriya Jambaker with Arkansas Children's Hospital tells us that naps are a no-no. So during this transition period, when your children are a little sleep deprived, it is very important that they don't take naps when they come to school. And with no naps, you also need to monitor their caffeine intake. It should be before, you know, 3 p.m. because it's going to last into the night and affect your sleep. Another thing that can affect sleep is electronics. It turns out that watching videos and playing games on your phone, it doesn't actually help relax you or the kiddos. That light from the... Um, from that electronic uh, electronic item is going to suppress the melatonin from your brain, so you're not going to be able to fall asleep. So the best thing to do is to take away electronics a few hours before bedtime and find a different way to unwind. And then keeping the last half an hour for maybe a warm shower, not very hot, not very cold, but a warm shower, dimming the lights in the room. Also, you know, spending the last few minutes maybe reading or maybe putting things together for the next day. These are all steps that doctors recommend taking, but they want you to be mindful that a true sleep schedule and routine, it could take days or even weeks. Covering news where you live, Tiffany Lee, 5 News. It's also important to make sure your kids are active during the day so they can fall asleep at night. The CDC says preschool kids need 11 to 14 hours of sleep. Grade school kids need 9 to 12 and teenagers need 8 to 10 hours each night in order to function best. Well, there are many elements that fall under the umbrella of non-traditional education and the most common are those who go to college later in life. 5 News anchor Darren Bob takes a closer look. The National Center for Education Statistics says about 70% of higher ed students fall under the non-traditional category. Jody Cabanillas of Van Buren is one of them. She already has one associate's degree from UA Fort Smith and will have another this spring. It was really important to me to have a good career for my, ch for my children. And I wanted to let them know that even though they were little, that their mom, I wanted them to be proud of me. 
Jody and her husband run a repair shop for refrigeration trucks and says her degrees make the job of running the office a whole lot easier. Mavis Lawson of Cedarville got her four-year degree at UA Fort Smith in IT. She went to college right after the Whirlpool plant closed several years ago. I think if Whirlpool hadn't have shut down, I probably wouldn't have. Both say they were a bit nervous stepping into the classroom with people younger than them. I don't think that it was as much of a challenge as when you're a freshman in college because you have more life skills, you have more experience, but it definitely was nerve-wracking. The larger classes, um, the core classes were a lot of younger kids, but then when I got in the smaller classes, there were a, a lot of people my age, and so at first I was nervous, but um, it didn't take long for me to feel like I belonged. And they both say juggling family life in college wasn't easy. I still had um, two stepsons at home and they had activities. And um, it was hard to find the time to study. It takes a lot of perseverance and a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work. As far as taking that leap and going to college later in life. No matter how old you are, you can do it. It doesn't matter what obstacles are in your way. You can always find a way to make it happen. I would tell them to do it. It's, it's never too late. And I had a very, very positive experience. And I, I wouldn't trade that for anything. A Bentonville teacher was surprised with a massive award, $25,000 and an all expenses paid trip to Los Angeles. The Milken Family Foundation awarded teacher Kamisha Burlingame with excellence in teaching. The prestigious award was given to the teacher during a school-wide assembly. Kamisha suspects she was chosen because of her dedication. Just, just transforming my classroom and making it a fun learning experience for kids that may never ever get to experience um, things that, like going on an airplane or um, being on a construction site or um, just different experiences. And so that's kind of what I try to do every day is to build lifelong learners. $70 million in individual $25,000 awards were given to teachers across the country to recognize teaching excellence. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is the Milken Educator Award and why is it such a big deal? Five News anchor Ruben Diaz explains. A point of pride for us is that we are now um, the, considered the nation's preeminent teacher recognition program and we've been coined the Oscars of teaching. But unlike the Oscars, the Milken Award is no popularity contest. In fact, the winners don't even know they're being considered and the foundation stays pretty tight-lipped about the process. Our internal team gets recommendations from across the whole country they're coming in and then we determine who we believe represent the top 1% of the profession nationally. So let that sink in. The 2,800 Milken Award winners represent the absolute best of the best in the teaching world over the last three decades. And while the $25,000 cash prize catches your eye, that's really just a part of the reward. Milken educators choose what they're going to do with this recognition. Doors absolutely open with these opportunities for leadership. The ripple effect goes beyond just the teacher who gets honored. The whole school feels it. And so often when we leave a school, one person has been recognized. We'll get a message from the principal. That assembly lifted everybody today. We all needed to hear the message about our work is valued and our work is so important to our students and our society. Which brings up probably the most important question. Why? Why give out this award? Why give out so much money? What's the inspiration behind it? The goals are very specific for the award. The first thing is we want to find the individual that represents the top talent in the, in the profession and give them an incentive to stay in education. The second goal is to bring public recognition to the good news and the results in education. We don't celebrate good news often enough. And it's always good news when our teachers, who often go so underpaid and underappreciated, get recognized for all that they do. I mean, where would any of us be without our teachers? Covering education where you live, Ruben Diaz, 5 News. The Happiest Place on Earth recently honored 50 teachers from all over the United States, and one of those educators was from right here in Northwest Arkansas. 5 News Morning anchor Laura Simon introduces us to the computer science teacher selected for Disney's Imagination Campus Celebration. It was an amazing experience. 
professionally, but also personally. This is a photo from Disney's Imagination Campus Celebration. Disney chose 50 teachers from 32 different states to fly out there over Memorial Day weekend. Jamie Stallings was the only guest of honor from Arkansas. More than 5,800 teachers applied. I applied for it on a whim, but I shared the work my kids have done, kind of my passion for what I do. Stallings teaches computer science at Lakeside Junior High in Springdale. He encourages his students to utilize their imaginations and creativity with technology. Cameras, we do live streaming, um, photos, video editing, 3D printing. Um, we have a laser. Uh, so just about anything that we can do, we'll have kids try to do it. Part of the curriculum allows his eighth and ninth graders to work on a documentary. And right now I've got a group of kids that are working on telling the story of the Marshallese bombings. During a time where teachers are feeling more burnout than ever, the event at Disney was a way to recognize America's education heroes. It was all in conjunction with Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary in Florida. We were grandmasters in a parade, which was amazing, like going through the Magic Kingdom. We got to hear from some Disney execs, some Imagineers. We got to ride the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride after the park closed on the day it was opened with the Imagineers that created it. Stallings is getting ready for the new school year, feeling refreshed and inspired. It's always great when teachers get together, they're able to network and talk and share ideas, but also getting some of the ideas from Disney and, and the way they're implementing, you know, creativity and imagination into the classroom. Covering news where you live, Laura Simon, 5 News. It's no secret that being a teacher is one of the hardest jobs around, and there's a Fort Smith teacher who not only finds it very rewarding, she helps others feel the same way. There's no one else in the state that does what she does. 5 News anchor Darren Bob explains. Courtney Burdick is a Greenwood native in her sixth year as a third grade teacher at Spradling Elementary School in Fort Smith. What makes her unique? She's the only lead apprentice mentor teacher in the state of Arkansas. It means she teaches teachers how to teach. The beginning when they absolutely had no idea how to even talk to students, how to set up a classroom, how to teach something. They relied so heavily on the college or the professors, which they're supposed to do. But my job is to completely start them from, you know, just the most basic book understanding to here's the real life, here's the real experience. She says she sees her job as a way to improve student achievement through better teachers. You have transformed a teacher who then can transform multiple kids on and on and on. So it's almost I'm helping guarantee success for more students later on. Burdick is allowed to travel around the state to mentor teachers. She says her biggest goal is to keep teachers in the classroom. I get to see teachers want to stay in the profession because they we have a no fail mentality and so I will not let them fail, and if they fail, I fail. So I don't want to fail. I want us all to be successful. And seeing that success, Burdick says she wouldn't want to do anything else. If you ever consider being a teacher, um, it is a lot of work, but it is one of the most rewarding professions I've ever been in. Um, it's definitely not about the money, um, but it's about those kids, the light bulbs, seeing them. But it's also about, in my job, getting to see teachers and their light bulbs and coaching them and making them successful. With baby boomers retiring, the need for workers in the skilled trades is growing and a new school in Fort Smith is training the next generation of welders. Let's go inside American Welding Laboratories. Inside this warehouse on Wheeler Avenue in Fort Smith, husband and wife team Danny and Angela Cobb are training America one weld at a time. So everything that you look at is welded, whether you're riding a roller coaster or you're going across the bridge to go to work, something is welded. Danny is the lead instructor and has 25 years experience in the welding industry. Going into the teaching aspect, I really enjoyed it and knew that I could really change lives by doing that. Angela is the administrator running the business behind the scenes. Both understand the need for welders. In high school, people were pushed to a college degree and the trades were kind of seen as a lesser thing, you know, and so people weren't pushed into the trades and we're, we're suffering for it now. And the statistics from the American Welding Society are staggering. Welders are actually in high demand. Um, by 2024, we're going to need over 300,000 welders. American Welding just started its first classes a few months ago and now has 15 students enrolled. 20 year old Kendall Willis drives an hour to school each day. Being able to do something that not a lot of females do really and it's just 
about being able to work with my hands. She's 20% through her coursework and should be done by early January with plans to work for a year or two before starting her own business. You can find welding just about anywhere. There's pretty much jobs anywhere and the money's great. You come here, you're gonna get the skill, possibly the certifications, and then you go to work. The process is fast with some students on track to finish in 12 weeks. And the school is partnering with several local manufacturing companies that need employees. What we're doing with them is we're doing more job specific training for these companies so that when our students leave, they're ready to go right to the floor and go right to work for them. While courses can range from five to $20,000, there are state, federal and tribal funds available. If you think you can't afford to go to welding school, there are funds out there. There's financial aid out there for just about everybody. Danny says watching his students succeed is very rewarding and the biggest requirement is a strong work ethic. You have to be passionate, you have to be willing to put in the work, and you have to be willing to do a little bit extra. Education continues to change and the way we teach kids also continues to change. 5 News anchor Ruben Diaz introduces us to a school that's using classic stories to reach and teach. Well, the party for Justin Justine make him or herself known and if it will be my friend. The words in the scene may seem familiar to most of you. Oh, oh and somebody takes this to you. What is your name? May I have a name, please? My name is Charlotte. That's right. This is Charlotte's Web, the classic tale of a pig and a spider forming a bond. But what makes this play a little different is, well, the actors. Because, like, I was shaking. Like, when I did my first performance, I was just like, my, I had eaten donuts that morning and my stomach was like churning and I felt like I was going to throw up. <laughs> and I was like, just remember your lines and you'll be fine. Ian and the rest of the child actors are all a part of the Community School of the Arts, a school that uses the theater to teach so much more than just acting. There's the reading aspect of it. There is the teamwork side of it. They're gaining leadership skills um, and they're taking those things and they're applying them within their schools and they are applying them when it comes to their studies and they're performing much higher than they would um, without the arts on their standardized testing. And There's a lot of function happening in the brain while they're on stage performing in addition to the emotional um, maturity that it takes to be an actor at such a young age. So the kids learned the lines, the blocking, the props and delivered it all in a way that made their teachers proud. Like we really had to talk to these kids about like what these characters were going through with like the death of Charlotte and the possible death of Wilbur. That's something that's really heavy for a young student to understand. However, they were able to grasp it and really deliver beautiful performances. A performance that'll stick with them for life. You see, the play is just a small portion of the overall lesson. That's what we really focus on is, it's not just, well, you know, educating theater singers and dancers or actors. We are focusing on them as individuals and building them up so that they can be successful in whatever field they go into. If you ask Wilbur, a.k.a. Ian, his teachers have definitely accomplished their mission. I was able to pull it off, so I feel like in other plays when I, like, if I get, like, in other plays, I feel like I can, like, I feel really confident about it. And With your Educate Arkansas, I'm Ruben Diaz. And thanks for joining us for this special edition of 5 News, sponsored by Forward Arkansas, highlighting teachers, schools, and students where you live. To watch more of our coverage, we have an Educate Arkansas tab at the top of our website, 5newsonline.com. I'm Erica Thomas. Have a great day.